Thank you, Director Binton, and warm greetings from the Pacific. At the outset, please allow me, on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency, or FFA as we call ourselves in shorthand, to congratulate Chatham House on its milestone achievement of 100 years. It is an honor to join you in this prestigious forum. My speech today will focus on the human element of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. Fishing is an industry where equipment and technology undoubtedly play key roles. Nevertheless, first and foremost, it remains about people which is why I will concentrate on the human component. There are many roles in the tuna fishery sector. Administrators, vessel operators, enforcement officers, processors, observers and crew, just to name a few. In the context of IUU fishing, I'll be highlighting three groups in this sector. The first two are those working on vessels whose human rights must be protected namely observers and crew. The third group is what we call at FFA, persons of interest, people involved in IUU fishing. These are very different groups, but there are developments in FFA's work, which I would like to share with you. It would be remiss of me not to reference gender in a speech about the human elements in fisheries. We all recognize the important role that women play in the fishery sector. However, given the excellent panel discussions on Tuesday, I will not cover that aspect here. This is a priority for FFA, and we look forward to contributing further initiatives in this critically important area. Let me now give you a brief overview of FFA's work as a precursor to the key theme I will explore. The FFA mission is empowering FFA members to take collective and national action for the sustainable use of offshore fisheries resources. To achieve this, we have four high-level regional goals. These are to maximize economic returns, enhance social benefits, combat IUU fishing, and extend regional solidarity. We in the Pacific have long recognized and practiced cooperation as the cornerstone for achieving these goals. This slide shows you the vast area under our 17 members jurisdiction, over 30 million square kilometers, which equates to over 28% of the world's exclusive economic zones. Our latest economic data shows that the value of access fees paid by foreign vessels to FFA members has continued to increase over recent years, rising to a record high of 555 million US dollars in 2018. These fishing revenues contribute directly to the livelihoods of our Pacific people, allowing them to build much needed schools, hospitals, roads, and infrastructure. Other associated benefits include food security, employment, and economic development. Our Pacific home is the only region in the world where all major tuna stocks are considered biologically healthy, and we are working together to keep it this way. FFA members also take pride in demonstrating global best practice for monitoring, control, and surveillance activities directed at combating IUU fishing. We were honored to have our integrated MCS framework acknowledged with the first prize in the 2019 Stop IUU Fishing Competition run by the Global Monitoring Control and Surveillance Network. The Marshall Islands goal to eliminate IUU fishing in the Pacific by 2023 and the Federated States of Micronesia's goal to have all longline vessels fitted with electronic monitoring equipment are also important stakes in the ground to drive progress. Nevertheless, we feel the urgency of the work still ahead of us. 
It's a sobering fact that according to an FFA study undertaken in 2016, tuna product in the Pacific caught via IUU fishing equates to over 600 million US dollars annually, resulting in an economic loss to FFA members of more than 150 million US dollars each year. These are revenues robbed from our people's livelihoods. The study also revealed that approximately 95% of our IEU challenge lies with unreported fishing by licensed vessels. So we need to ensure our tools respond to this challenge. A third of the world's tuna supply comes from FFA members' waters, in particular from the waters of our sub-regional grouping among our membership, known as the Parties to the Nauru Agreement. Therefore, from a national, sub-regional, regional and international perspective, the continued sustainability of our tuna fisheries is vital. Let me now turn to the key theme of my speech, the human element of illegal fishing, with a focus on observers, crew and persons of interest. FFA is increasingly recognizing that we need to focus on people, not just technology, in our efforts to combat IUU fishing. In terms of monitoring fishing activities, our observers are our frontline workers on fishing vessels. The importance of observers cannot be understated, as these are our eyes and ears at sea who collect critical data for science and compliance, such as monitoring catch and ensuring fishermen are following the rules. This is a vital role in protecting our oceans and preserving fish stocks. However, it can be a dangerous and lonely role as they can face hostilities from those that they are monitoring, sometimes leading to incidents or loss of life. The safety of our observers is a key priority for FFA. Steps taken by our members include establishing conditions of access to our waters to include minimum safety standards for observers and our push at the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission for the adoption of an observer safety measure. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the immediate impact has been on our observers. For their health and safety during this global pandemic, FFA members have had to temporarily suspend the use of observers to monitor activities on vessels as well as transshipment of fish between vessels. It's important to underline that whilst these temporary measures are in place, we still have an integrated suite of tools in our MCS framework, including vessel log sheets, vessel monitoring system and transshipment reports to collect much needed data. The current situation also provides an impetus to prioritize work on tools such as electronic monitoring and electronic reporting. These technologies will support the observer's role. However, the repatriation of FFA observers due to the coronavirus risk has severely impacted their livelihoods. Therefore, the FFA will explore ways in which the role of observers can be broadened to ensure they are not heavily dependent on fishing trips for income and that their valuable data analysis skills can be applied readily on land, for example, to analyze the data collected through electronic monitoring. Similarly for crew, there is much work to be done to improve their working conditions on vessels. There has been a lot of coverage highlighting this form of modern day slavery, and we have a collective responsibility to address this. FFA members drove the adoption of the resolution for minimum labor standards for crew at the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission in 2018. Notably, 
This is the first regional fisheries management organization to make a stand for Kuru. In addition, our members adopted a landmark decision last June for minimum conditions of access to their waters relating to crew employment, such as ensuring there is a written contract for the crew member, humane treatment of crew, decent and fair remuneration, proper medical care and sufficient rest periods. It does not end there. There has been much talk globally about improving observer and crew safety in the fishing industry. But I suggest that we can all do better in walking that talk and prioritizing steps to ensure their safety and well-being. As I noted earlier, the approach to combating IUU fishing has to date been heavily focused on vessels. This includes the good standing vessel list on our FFA vessel register, the vessel compliance ratings in our regional surveillance picture, IUU vessel lists and strategies to overcome flags of convenience. However, in order to more effectively combat IUU fishing, we must actively look behind the vessels at the persons, natural and legal, operating and controlling the IUU vessels. It is people who commit fisheries offences. Vessels are just one platform for IUU activities. Persons of interest profiling, including information about the history and performance of persons, would be extremely valuable as a tool for proactive decision making and increasing the information for decision makers. A key task in this project is to go behind the corporate veil to reveal beneficial owners, to ensure that key persons involved in a vessel's IUU activity are held accountable, and not just the vessel owner and master. Our ambition for world-leading standards and the resilience and adaptability of our Pacific people has been revealed again during this global pandemic. We have a continued determination to work together. In conclusion, I have every confidence that we in the Pacific can persevere and be successful with these key elements at a regional level. However, this is not work that we can do alone. We all recognize that IUU fishing is a global challenge. The people factor inherent in our industry must be addressed in a more concerted way. The benefits of cooperation are manifestly positive. So much like our Pacific region, I believe that using the cornerstone of cooperation, including within this network, will provide better solutions to addressing IUU fishing. Its consequences are too significant to ignore in terms of its detrimental impact on the livelihoods of our people. I conclude with a call to action for all of us to build on this opportunity presented by Chatham House to work together in addressing these human elements. Thank you.